internal affairs. President Barack Obama will spend most of his day pushing health care reform, but there are some big hurdles in the way. The president may have to make a difficult concession to get his agenda through. Joining us now from Washington, D.C. is Congressman Brian Bill Bray, Republican from the 50th District. Good morning. Always to see you, sir. It's always good to see you. All right, pals. Always, always great to be with you, Arthur. Well, okay, let's, this is complicated uh, because this is all happening now. Um, I just said that the president may have, a, have to make a difficult concession to get his agenda through, which could be possibly taxing health care. Is that the concession, one of them? Well, it's one that uh, he's kind of confronted with. Remember, he kind of ridiculed McCain for mentioning that, and now the big labor unions really are opposed to that. I think his biggest uh, challenge, though, is just the price tag. You, you know, right now, if you talk about a trillion to two trillion dollars to start off with for a price tag for any new program, even if it's uh, health care is a, a really a, a heavy lift. How are you going to pay for it, I think, is even a, um, is the real tough one. And that brings him back to having to talk about taxing benefits. And a lot of those benefits are benefits that have been negotiated by labor unions. And, um, you know, again, let's kind of back up, Congressman. First of all, um, it, it, it's my understanding, because this thing is still complicated, uh, and I'll admit, um, that this is sort of like an HMO, which uh, limits patients the choices of doctors and then on, in turn encourages doctors to uh, cut down on the amount of care time that they're given a patient and they benefit from it. Is that how this thing is working? Well, I tell you, there's all kinds of attitudes going out there. Right now with the president, he's sort of got an idea of what do you think about this, and it, we're not really seeing a hard proposal with a lot of details. We're seeing sort of a, um, a uh, let's just say, a fishing expedition of who will bite on certain issues, and I think that is what he's doing right now. He's seeing how many people will agree with him on a certain proposal, um, but I don't, see, uh, I don't see anything really in concrete yet it's it's still trying to sort of develop a strategy and again it comes back down to this reality that somebody has to pay for it and that's why you see the president um, you know some people may say go back on a campaign promise but I think it's just he's reflecting the reality that now he's no longer a candidate he's a president and sometimes that means doing things that you didn't think you could do I don't think he um, uh, meant to mislead anybody during the election I think he just didn't know that mm. these are the kind of decisions you may have to have to have a national health care system okay well now it's it's a, I, I understand that the idea that uh, the candidate Obama and now President Obama his idea is to provide health care for the 47 million Americans who are uninsured um, but is this going to be imposed on everyone even if you already have insurance that you have to go with this plan well, they're going to say that you have to have something, and the pr biggest problem you have is if they have a government plan as an option, history's proven that the government will squeeze out everybody else, as you know, and then when you have a, um, the government with a monopoly, you lose cost-effectiveness and, and, and um, you know, uh, consumer choice, and that really affects both cost and quality. So that's the biggest concerns you have. And you've got to remember, too, we're not talking about, you know, England with 50 million, French with 60 million, you know, uh, Ireland with 20 million. We're talking about 350 million people being put into one system and a system that will be hard to change, hard to modify. And, and frankly, I think that's the big challenge. You know, it was one thing for Governor Romney in Massachusetts to do a real um, health care plan in one state because if there's problems, that state can change it. It's small enough to modify. When you do it at the federal government level, the biggest problem with this town is not that it tries new things or makes mistakes, but it never goes back and corrects it and expects the consumer and the taxpayer to pay the price and Con lower Con quality and higher costs. So this Con is a tough sell. Let, let me jump in here, Congressman, because, again, I'm, I'm not clear. I, I understood that this was, again, to, uh, the idea was to... Uh, provide health insurance coverage for the 47 million Americans who don't current who currently don't have it but I'm hearing that this is going to be something that's imposed on everyone is that what you're saying well to be able to make everybody covered you got to force everybody to join into some program however and that's the real kicker and that but I understand that there's a page 114 or 104 that it says that federal employees, which means you, that you guys are somehow uneligible therefore exempt so you get to keep whatever plan you want to yeah, for right now, yes. And the trouble is, is what you'll get down to on theory, the concept is federal employees don't have to because we're already covered. 
but the that also applies to a lot of other people who yeah. are covered right now but the trouble is once you've jacked up the and caused escalation of price how many people drop out of the old system because of sheer price and then are forced that the only other option is to go into the federal government one size fits all hmm. that's the big concern we have is you ca you have a real problem and you got to remember that a lot of you know you you have percentages of people who don't want to spend that money on their health care and a lot of us that, that believe that, um, you know, they ought to. Yeah. But in a nation of free choices, you got some real problems there. And then you got problems with foreign nationals, everything else. Who is this 46 million? Who's belonging here? Do they have jobs or is this um, somehow a, a number that hasn't been verified yet? A lot of these numbers go around, and that's one of the things yeah, that we need to verify a lot. And, uh, I, well, I have to go, but go I got to tell you something. If if the 47 million include people uh, who don't have jobs, I believe that everybody in America should have uh, health coverage. But I'm not saying I sanction the president's package because I don't know what's going on there. Quite frankly, I'm trying to figure it out too. Um, yes or no? Uh, President Obama I, says that he is going to have a health care reform package come the end of 2009. Do you think it's going to happen? Yes or no? I don't think we're going to get be able to pay for it. And I think that um, if you ask people if they'd like to have free housing, they say yes. If you ask them do they want to live in government housing, they say, heck no, I wouldn't raise my kids there. I think that's the big selling point, to show that a government program um, will be something that we'll all be willing to not only accept but to embrace because we're talking that trillion to two trillion just to start with is a, a, lot, a lot to swallow. So it's